Hello. Welcome in. Are you guys there? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hi, Teresa. How are you doing? Teresa Lloyd. Welcome in, Teresa. Bless you. Tammy. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> Jane. How are you doing, Jane? You, you woman of your word. Tell you. <laughs> Lakeisha. Derek Pitts. Patricia Scott. Carrie Ann. All the way from Jamaica. Melbourne. <laughs> Welcome in guys, how y'all doing? <laughs> it's my boy Derek. <laughs> yes, Maria Curry. Sophie Dames. Blessing. Natasha Phillips is watching. Bless you, Natasha. So good to hear from you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lakeisha, masterpiece. I am God's masterpiece is here. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> yes, carry on. Good to see you all. Natasha Bryce. Hi, Natasha. How are you? God bless you, Natasha. Welcome in. Natasha, can you invite some people? Hi, Rhonda. Can you invite some people, Rhonda? Rashila, can you invite some people? Hey, Amanda. Wow, I see you for a while. Giselle. <laughs> Patricia Scott Isaac. Bless you, Patricia. So good to see you. Amen. Amen. Yes, Rhonda. God bless you. Can you invite some people in? Can you share it? We're going to go on, on to um, part two or three, I think it is. I'm not sure. Got to go back into the archives. Of occultic objects that bring oppression. Amen. We're going to go into this subject. Um, because we've been dealing with it a lot. Amen? And um, this is something that I just want to touch on um, this evening. We had an awesome time in the service yesterday. God moved by His Holy Spirit. We had people who were delivered, set free. We had people who um, would, were under the yoke of Satan, set free. We had people who was activated into their ministries. It was the honey... And oil, glory are pouring. We literally had honey. The Lord said anoint everybody with honey. So they could be attractive to success and their blessings. And so we did prophetic activation. And the power of God moved and fell in that place. You had to bend there. You had to bend there because of the power and the presence and the atmosphere of the Lord. It was one of deliverance and one of breakthrough. It was one of tremendous deliverance, tremendous breakthroughs. Amen. We had a lady who came there who couldn't even walk. And she left walking. <laughs> She left walking, praising the Lord. Amen. And she had the witchcraft broken off of, um, of many, many years. Amen. We had people who were living in the bush, living in, um, in trees and living in houses. I thought I was the only one. But we had people testifying. And we're going to put it up as soon as it's available. About how they were delivered from the power. Minister Valentine, bless you. Bless you, Pastor Valentine. <laughs> it's a mighty man of valor right there. Respect him highly. <laughs> Doing big things for the Lord. Amen. And so we had the service where um, God moved and God um, spoke by His Spirit. People were crying. People were uh, vomiting and bringing up stuff. Uh, because a lot of times um, the adversary wants to plant things in you so you can move forward. Amen. Um, so he wants to bind and, and have you bound in that area. And so God is getting ready to set His people free. But what we want to talk about today is um, dealing with occultic objects and items that bring oppression. Occultic items that bring oppression. Amen? Candy Forbes, Rashida Jones. Hello, Candy. How are you, Candy? <laughs> Candy Forbes, that's a nice name. Hey, Miss Bryce. What you say, Miss Bryce? God bless you. Kelly Jones is in the house. Kelly Johnson is in the house. Hey, Ben. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 
So let's let's uh, let's pray before the Lord, Father God. We just we just bless Your holy name. We give You glory. We give You praise. We give You honor today, Lord. And we ask that Your Holy Spirit would speak through me, Lord. I move Peter Spencer out of the way, God. And I ask that You would speak through Your servant, God. I was nothing. I'm never nothing. It's only because of You, Lord, who raised me up from the miry clay and gave me a voice to speak for this season, Lord. I am just Your hand servant, Lord. God, I thank you for this opportunity that you've given me again. And so right now, as I come before you right now with all my friends, we're here to share and we're here to, to speak with us as the Lord. I ask that, God, this will be a time of enlightenment, time of glory, time of praise, time of worship, and that, Father God, someone will have been set free from what is about to be said. We give you glory, we give you honor today in the Master's name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen, amen. Well, I want to tell you the story first. I was uh, going by a friend's house, and <clears throat> he was having some serious problem. And he said, you know, I want you to take a look at something, man of God. You know, I just want you to see something and tell me what you think, you know. So I went to the house, and um, we went to take a look, you know. And I was just, I was just um, walking through the house. He said, walk through, walk through, walk through. And the first thing that caught my eyes was, was these big masks that was... That was on the table, these masks, these wooden carving masks, you know. And try as I might, he said, can you pray for the place? So I said, yeah, sure, man, no problem. So I was praying for the place. And every time I prayed, I would feel, I would feel the resistance and I would feel like the masks were watching me. You know that type of feeling? It's like an oppressive feeling, the mask. So after I finished praying, I just was talking to him and I said, okay, we bless the place up now, you know, um, you know, so... You know, we just chit-chatting. And so he said, uh, he said, um, is there anything wrong? So I said, I said, yes, 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 yes. I said, uh, I said, you know, basically those masks, and I said, where did you get them from? He said, oh, uh, some guys, um, they were working on a ship, you know, and they came and, and uh, you know, they would bring them over and I would, I would get them from them, you know. I said, oh, okay, 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 okay. He said, he said, uh, what you feeling? I said, um, I said, there's a, there's a presence with that man. I said, those things, you know, they cause trouble. I said, you know, uh, they're going to cause problems for you, man. I said, I already see they already started to because you can't seem to finish this house. You can't seem to, to move forward. You don't lose this job that you had. You had a job making almost 15 grand a month and you already lost it for simple things. He said, you believe the mask will do all that? I said, um, yeah, I said, some things. You know, it's not an, you know, I was wrong with the mask. I say, you know, some masks are just masks. You know, I said, but I feel a force with them. And I keep going, as I'm praying, I am keep going back to them. And I said, you know, these masks that you have, um, a lot opened my eyes and gave me revelation. I said, they were used in ceremonial magic. These masks were used in war tribes. They were used in, when they're about to go to war. And so we, he was always having problems with his family. He was always in some sort of mix-up. He was always rowing with the guys at work. It was always some sort of some sort of um, you say and I say some sort of drama. So when we got rid of the mask, he would try to give them away to people. I said, you know what? I don't want you really giving them away to nobody. Um, I say, you know, just try to burn them. He went to all kinds of people to try to give them away. Nobody would take them. <laughs> Nobody would take the mask. He even tried to give it away to a white guy. You know, white people, they kind of open. The white guy looked at the mask and said, no, 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 no. <laughs> so he tried to burn them. Couldn't burn. Wouldn't burn. It took, it took, a, it took many days to burn those mask. So what I told him to do was I told him, I think I told him, put olive oil on it first. Put the olive oil on it first and then go and burn it. And that's how they begin to burn. Eventually, his life took off. I mean, things began to get so good for him. He began to, to just, I mean, be establishing things and got a lot of breakthroughs, amazing breakthroughs he got simply because he took away the spirit of oppression. Amen? He got rid of the oppressive spirit that was causing the problem. And I beg to tell you right now that there is a spirit that wants you to know or not know, rather, that um, they are trying to sneak into your house unawares through things that look simple, 
harmless. They look like a little trinket, amen? But they anything but that. Hey, Crystal Wiley, welcome in, Crystal. They anything but that. And Deuteronomy 7 and 26 says, Neither shall ye bring an abomination into thy house, and a cursed thing like it. Thou shalt utterly detest, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is an accursed thing. The Lord here is trying to tell you that you should utterly, Priscilla, how are you doing? Utterly detest bringing accursed objects into your house. So what the enemy would try to do is he would try to get you to take these objects into your house very, 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 very um, sneaky. And there would be something where it doesn't seem like it's a problem. Amen? It might be even a shell. It might be even a phone that someone gave you. It might be even something as simple as, as some jars. Amen? Um, but if you don't understand what's going on, um, you could be in trouble. I remember um, dealing with a, with a, with a, with a gentleman, um, and he said, you know, he said, Pete, you know, he said, this guy wanted me to bring in some Jeeps for him, you know. This was way back in the day. This was concerning bringing in Jeeps. This was the Mercedes Jeeps. And I said, well, why you bring him in? And I said, let's bring him in. You know, we could, we could you know, we could, we could, you could make a dent in the market. And you could pretty, you know, you could pretty much do well for yourself, you know, because you need a big break. <clears throat> so he said, there's only one thing, man. He says, I, I want to do it. But he says, you know, I, 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 I don't trust the guy. I said, what happened? He said, you know, I know... That if I if I do these things, I'm, I'm gonna be in trouble because because um because the guy did some stuff. I said, "Why?" He said, "He said he offered me something." Have anybody ever heard of a god belt? You guys ever heard of that? Have you guys ever heard of a god ring? Anybody? Well, a god ring is something that will allow you. To move back and forth without being harmed. Police could pull you on the side of the road and you could have drugs in your car and they'll never see the drugs. You could go through customs or any place or you could go anywhere. Bullets will fly and they don't touch you. Anybody else gets shoot but you. It's a guard ring and it's from a Jamaican. <clears throat> this was from a Jamaican guy who he was dealing with. The Jamaican guy said he got us from an old lady and he was. Um, never been to court, never got caught, never found any drugs on him, nothing. They couldn't trace it because he had on his guard ring and his guard belt. The belt used to um, look ordinary, it looks it look simple. It doesn't look like, you know when something doesn't look wicked and you can see that it's wicked? Well, the guard belt, it looks very normal. It, as a matter of fact, it could pass for a nice belt in a Gucci shop. Or it could pass for a nice ring you'd find in any store, like the ring that I put out there of the gentleman that we dealt with, that looked like a normal ring, and it is supposed to look normal. It is supposed to look like so it could pass for for nothing. You'll see it, you'll say, oh, there's nothing to it. But if you were discerning, or if you have the eyes of the spirit, you will begin to feel something about it. You'll say, I don't know what it is, but this thing creeping me out. I don't know what it is, but there's something wrong with this thing. And people say, oh, I bet you just talk it your head. You know, you just, you, you, you know, you, you just, you always... You're so super spiritual. You're always saying things. You're always, you're always hearing this. Sometimes a belt is a belt. Sometimes a ring is a ring. But he's saying, why am I feeling this way about this thing? And so it was. He said, because of that, he didn't want to do business with him because he knew that there was a price to pay. He knew he's going to pay, have to pay a price for this, uh, for this, um, for this guard belt eventually. Because, you know, that's, that's, what, that's what they did, you know. Back in the day, you know, um, you know, you don't just get these gifts for nothing. And so I remember even living in Lucayan Towers, and there was a guy there, a very nice fellow, and he was telling me, he said, he said, Pete, you're a nice Christian guy, you know, and I think he meant well. He said, you know, but sometimes you need more than Christ. <laughs> and this is what I think is get people in trouble, because they feel like Christ's working too slow, and so they end up going to a Mamba, or a Sangoma, or a Babalu, or a witch doctor, or a herbalist, or a conjure man to get these things done. So what eventually happened is, um, he told me, he said, listen, you need to get this thing on you. He said, he said, right now with me, he said, no one can touch me. I am invincible. He said, even they try to come at me with that stuff, they can't touch me. I'm, I'm, I'm totally protected. 
just like with the guard ring, where the guy was offering this other guy, it would make him um, invulnerable to any sort of witchcraft or any sort of occultic powers. <clears throat> So I tell him, I said, man, I really appreciate that, you know, I really appreciate that, you know, thank you so much. And I know you mean well. I said, but the Lord I serve, you know, I, I prefer to wait on him, you know, I, 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 I will take my chances with him. He said, you sure? So he pulled out out of his wallet a red handkerchief. And in the red handkerchief, it was like tied with a knot. There was a string tied around it. And he had all these little things around it, you know. And he said he carries with him everywhere he go, nowhere he go. And then he related to me the story of how when he went to Haiti, on a vacation, he said there was a, a, a lady who wanted who wanted his power. And you know, witches and warlocks, they duel a lot. We don't see them, but they duel a lot. They, and they believe, just like, um, if you ever watch Highlander, they believe that they kill you, they take your power. And, and so they always, they're always dueling, they're always fighting. We might not even be aware of it because they fight in the astral realm a lot of times. They fight in the dream realm, in the dream state. And so he said, this lady came at him and she said, um, in real life, she literally was back him, and he was driving around, coming up the cliff, because you know that Haiti is very mountainous. Haiti is very mountainous. And so as he was coming down the cliff, she drove him off the cliff. He said, he drew, she, uh, all he knows is when he felt the thing in his pocket, flash, flash. He said, flash. He felt it vibrate. And, he, and the spirit that was in the thing was in the, the mixture of the bag. Right, his essence, right, man of God. Right. Flew up. He said, flew. He flew up. He said, he said, all he knows, he saw this light come around him and surround him off the mountain top. This mountain top probably was hundreds of feet down. And he all he knows, he saw himself floating. He said, when he woke up the next day, he was in his bed. The car was total. The car was messed up. But yet he was in his bed. He said, the thing that he had around him, the guard, the guard uh, package or whatever it is, protected him. And because of that, because that he was able to, he was able to, to avoid being killed by a witch who wanted his power. And I said, "Well, what happened, man?" I said, "What happened?" You know, I, by this time he'd be intrigued. You know, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, some, I'm a young Christian. You know, um, just learning about spiritual warfare and all the stuff. And, and so I'm looking, I'm, I wanted to hear what happened, man. How, 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 how what, what, what was the, the, the end of the story? You know. So he said, he said. He said he, you know, he checked himself and he made sure to do what he had to do. He said he did his thing. He did his bath, did his uh, rituals, you know, made his, made his, uh, 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 you know, his obligations to, to, the, to the deity he's serving. And he said when night came, <laughs> so he took off. Right, they call a talisman. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Pastor Valentine, thank you very much. Yes, a talisman. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. So he said after he did, um, you know, everything he wanted to do, you know, of course, he robbed his talisman, and he armed himself, and then he said he left in astral form. He left in astral form, and then he met her. He met her, uh, and she was so shocked because she was sure he was dead. And when she saw him, she was shocked, and he said he went into her house, and into her dream, and and kill her. He literally, pull us, put a finger into her heart, and kill her. So when, she, when they went to find her in the morning, they found a dead person, but it didn't look like she was dying from natural causes. It didn't look like she went to sleep and died. It didn't look like, you know, like, like no one murdered her, so, so to speak. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning, Prophet. Good morning, Enduring Strength. Sorry. <laughs> it looked like, it looked like, uh, like she just died of natural causes, but he went and killed her in the astral form. Amen? There are some people <clears throat> that are fighting in the astral form and the astral realm, but there's also some people who have objects in their house that are causing problems. As I spoke earlier about the young man, and also there's a young lady who, at the same time, um, was experiencing a lot of downturn in her business. So she decided to get a new contact, and I said, "Listen, I want you guys. I actually, the Lord allowed me to prophesy it to their life. I said, I see you're making these contacts." And then the Lord said to tell you all, you all um, even though there wasn't nothing looked right then and there, they were actually, you know, not doing really well. The Lord said, you're going to go to Panama. You're going to go to the Latin American countries. You're going to go all about, you're going to go to China. And the Lord said, he's going to give you these trailers for your business. And so they believe the word of the Lord. They believe the word of the prophet. And so time came by and eventually it happened. 
But I said, here's what I want you to do. I said, I want you guys to honor God now. Don't bring back no cultic objects. Don't bring back nothing that um, was, will cause God to be angry with you or to cause you to be snared. Amen? I said, yeah, I don't want you to be snared. Don't be snared with stuff. And don't get caught up in what they say. I said, you know, be careful because God wants to bless you. But do not allow yourself to be snared with these things. So on the first trip, they brought back some stuff. And it was, I mean, plenty stuff, plenty stuff, plenty stuff, plenty stuff. So when I looked again, this guy had this cat come into his door every night, a black cat, every night. I, I said, what? He said, he said, he said, man of God, this black cat come into my house every night. This black cat always to my house and I chase it and I chase it and run it and it still come back every night. I said, well, why that so? He said, well, I know, man, I know. I said, I said, you sure? I said, I said, is there anything you, is attracting in there? No, 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 man, we good, man, we good. I said, okay. So he said, can you pray for me? So I prayed. I prayed and, and, and went away for a while. It went away for, for a good while. And then when I look again, he said, the cat is back. He said, this time the cat will be sitting on top of my car. He said, the cat will be top of this black cat on top of my car. And this is a very huge cat. I don't know how, I don't know, this is like a huge black cat. And like, we don't know, nobody's owner in the neighborhood. So I said, well, that's strange, you know, what's going on? So I, I inquired of the Lord, you know, and the Lord said, ask him about, ask him if he have any occultic stuff in his house. <laughs> so I said, what? The Lord said, ask him if he has any occultic stuff in his house. Or is he carrying any occultic stuff from his shop? So I said, listen, bro, um, this might seem strange, and I know I already talked to you guys, we had a nice talk, we had a wonderful talk, so I know you ain't doing that. But just on the, on the upside, do you have any occultic stuff in your your, um, your possession that you try to sell. Um, well, I got these snakes with me, and I got these skulls, and I got these frogs, and I got these um, uh, uh, these funny carbons, you know. I said, what? He said, yeah, I got these skulls. I said, skulls? I said, man, I told you not to mess with the skulls. He said, these snakes, and these, uh, it was some other demonic looking creatures that he had. And when I saw them, it was like, my spirit was so grieved, and I was so, I didn't even look at the stuff, and I looked at it. I said, I said, please throw them away. Please throw them away. He tried to sell them. I said, listen, do not sell these things, please. I know you think about profit, you think about money, and you think about how much you lose it. I said, but this can cause you. This caused him so much problem with his marriage. Him and his wife was on the verge of getting divorced. They used to call me every other day to bring them up from fighting. I said, guys, can't you see? Look how the Lord blessed y'all, but y'all don't want to listen, man. You know, look at these things. You know, you, you may think you're making the money now. Yeah, the skulls, the pirates selling, the pirates selling, the skulls selling, uh, uh, the, the snakes selling, and, and these frogs and, and different things selling. But look how, look how it's doing your life. It's giving you with one hand and taking with the next. It's destroying your relationship. It's destroying the business that you have and you can't understand. And so I went back to him again. And I looked at him and I said, you got rid of stuff? Oh, almost gone, almost gone, almost gone. I said, what do you mean almost gone? He said, man, I sell these things, man. I just try to get them off the bank and buy them again. I was just so angry with this boy. You know, I just didn't know what to do. But you know, he's a man and I can't, I can only, I can only stay you. I can only tell you. I can only advise you. And so I just, just advised them what to do. When I look again, I said, now you got rid of these objects, right? I said, please do not get any more objects like this to bring into your house or to bring into your shop because it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause problems. It's going to destroy your life. It's going to destroy your marriage. Well, anyhow, when I look again, he brought more stuff in. And then it's like more trouble. One day I went to pray because they asked me to come and pray for the shop, you know, to pray for the new stock. So I went in to pray for the new stock. When I got there, Again, the same type of stuff, the same skulls and pirates and little funny looking gnome looking demon creatures and, you know, little funny little strange things. And my skin began to crawl again. I said, you guys doing the same thing again? Do you know that caused them so much problems? They ended up losing forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 just in sales in Nassau alone. I think um, this lady was stealing from them to the utmost, man. I, I, know that, I know it had something to do with the stuff they were bringing in. And the woman who's working for them who's supposed to be the friend ended up stealing almost forty, I think it's forty to eighty thousand dollars from them, right under their nose. And again they begin to fight. Again, stuff was getting flooded in the shop and 
silly things happening in the cars, breaking off for nothing. It was an oppressive spirit. And and yet you can see they got they got millionaire status on their life, you know. But the thing that they were bringing in was causing them problems, amen. And even so, to the point where, as, um, and I I know they I know they um um, um you know kind of like you know they they see it, but they don't see it. You know that way. How could I be the key? How could I be causing a problem? But it is because you bring it in your house and allow that access. And it caused them daily, man. It caused them even with a child. You know, it caused them with a child. And I said, you know what? They asked me what the problem is. I said, the, I said, the thing you bring in is what causes the problem with a child. And it literally, sad to say, I love them daily. It caused them with a child. It caused them with a child. I said, this is what it causes. Because you didn't listen, the child died. And, and I, I felt very bad about it. I, I love them daily. But... I told them not to bring in these occultic items. Stop bringing them in. They say, well, the man sent them to us. I say, well, you send them back to the man. I don't care what you do. Obey God. Listen to his servants. We're here to help. You know, we're not here. They're not here to take from you. We're here to give you. We're here to bless you. Amen? Um, and we prayed for the child. We, we fasted for the child. We did all kinds of stuff. But you still had the stuff. Every time I go to the shop, your stuff still in there. Oh, I get rid of it. I get rid of it. I get rid of it. Oh, yeah, I get rid of it. Oh, yeah, I get rid of it. The stuff's still in your house. It's still in your shop. It's still in your house. You have it in the shop and your house. So, I'm sorry, but it ended in tragedy. But God still is able to repay. Amen? It was a hard lesson. I'm sorry, but that's what happens sometimes when you don't listen. You don't listen. Stop bringing the accursed thing into your house. The accursed thing will bring problems. Amen? And it's sad because it could have been avoided. But you look at the money, you look at it, you know, the thousand dollars a day, look at it, maybe the, the three thousand dollars a day. Yes, you're making the money, but you can pay it somewhere else. You can pay it somehow, somewhere else. Amen. And that's 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 what it's designed to do. Once you've given that demon a legal right to get into your house, it has a vortex, a spiritual inventory. Yes, yes, my God, man, right on point. Because once you get in there, it begins to it begins to create a vortex. It begins to create a satanic doorway and it now has a satanic presence in there because you've given it a legal right and remember satan is a legalist he will take any opportunity he can to cause problems and he will allow you to bring in a crystal ball amen he'll call it and cause you to bring in a crystal ball he'll cause you to uh, 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 bring in uh, uh, um, um, uh, all types of of leaflets and pamphlets from from different occultic religions he'll cause you to bring in uh, 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 like I say um, some of these things that you know you shouldn't bring in for instance you will see a book um, says five ways to get your husband back but when you look at the author you see the author is a new age author you see the author exactly exactly by the God exactly at what cost you see that he's you see, you see that he's deep into the new age you bring in um, a lot of these books that are self-help guru but they have a new age bent most of those guys are witches they're in covens who are writing these books yes they have the talk they have the title doctor behind it but behind the books and behind um the 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 writing is an a is a, a, a cultic uh person who's deep into witchcraft or they're deep into into magic amen some ceremonial magic some of outright sickness and you're buying their product. Well, when you buy their product, what happens? They had a thing blessed or, as we say, cursed. So when it comes into your house, um, it causes untold damage. And then the demon them now is looking for a place. I'm an exterminator, so I know about infestation. I know about when one or two small roaches get into your house, what they do. The small roaches, when they get into your house, they would simply multiply and multiply and multiply and by the time you catch up with them they are now what they're now a couple thousand strong now you start to see them pop up that's because they grow to the point where they're exploding and by the time you catch up with them it's so late that they've already taken over your house some of the signs are you'll, you'll begin to see strange noises when you have these things in your house strange noises You'll hear strange sounds. You'll hear objects moving. Sometimes it's outright nightmare. Sometimes you'll actually see the operation. You'll see the forces. And God would have told you, move this stuff out. 
Amen. Get this out. Some people have old stuff from, from a grandmother. Amen. That's what caused a baby to die too. Because they had this crystal ball from their grandmother that she left. And instead of the guy throwing it out, what he did? He hoarded and hid it in a, a uh, basement. And when they did the, the inventory, they found out um, that it was the crystal ball that caused the child to die. Amen. It was the crystal ball that caused his, him his granddaughter. Because it was a witchcraft curse, a sign with the crystal ball that the grandmother already died and left. Anytime you see people who are hoarding, you've got to be careful of that too. Because hoarding also causes um, demonic spirits to enter. How many times after you clean the house you feel like, oh my God, I just, whoo, just feel so good. I just cleaned this house. And you feel, you feel uh, different. Well, spirits are attracted to dirt. They're attracted to unclean places. They're attracted to, to hoarding. And they're attracted to, to junk. And so a lot of times people are sick. You're attracted to a sick spirit. This demon spirit is a sickly spirit. And so it's attracted to your house. Amen? That's why house cleaning is so powerful on a spiritual level as well as on a physical level. Just like how we made the lady, um, we, we did a clean up for the lady and, and uh, um, we made her you know, clean the stuff out and we, we asked her to, to throw away a lot of stuff and to burn what she, you know, what, she, um, what she found. Well, when she did that, it was like a 360 degree turn. We, we had to throw away a lot of stuff. We had to move on a lot of things and that was the beginning of her moving forward from stagnation. You know, there was a lady we went to Every night an owl would be coming to the house. Every night an owl coming to the house, watching her, this owl, um, to the point where she went out and she cursed the owl. I said, you curse him in the spirit? She said, no, physically. <laughs> she said she did have some 5 pounds, 15 pounds, 20 pounds words. But what happened is the house had some things attached to it. The house had some, some stuff that needed to be thrown out, amen? Sometimes it is some books we have in some tarot cards. Amen. Sometimes it's some new age material. Sometimes it's Ouija boards. Come on. Sometimes it's Gnostic books. Sometimes it's self-help spiritual book. Sometimes it's the theosophy books. Amen. Sometimes it is fairy decks. Sometimes it's ascended master decks. Sometimes it's angel decks. Sometimes it's mystical books. Amen. Books. Books that you know you shouldn't have, that the Holy Spirit will approve of, that He's not authorized you to read them. Some people are not assigned to read them. There are some people who are assigned to read them, but that's because they're going to write about it, expose it. If that's not your calling, stay away from it. Let me tell you something. Some people have stones. I was telling this lady, and I was witnessing her. She said, I get rid of it. So, Peter, I get rid of everything you said, get rid of it. But I can't get rid of my crystals. She said, They have in a body. Them crystals, they helped me. They soothed me. And man, them crystals are so good. You know why? They, they're nice. They do a lot of nice things. They help people. They heal people. I don't know if I can get rid of crystals. I'm still working on it. But see, what happened is that means that thing had, had a hole in him. Anything you could go into your house and you say you can't get rid of on a spot, that means it has a hole in you. Some pictures and some painting you have to get rid of because it ain't overtly occult. But every time you look at it, why do you feel like a presence attached to it? Why do you feel like there's something watching you whenever you look at this picture? There's a picture I bought one time. I went to a sale and I bought a picture. And it had these eyes. It had two eyes. That's all it was. It was two eyes. And that's what it was drawn to me. It drew me just by the eyes of the picture. The eyes. And I bought it for a good penny too. And I remember putting it up in my apartment. And I could swear that everywhere I moved that the thing was watching me. To the point where I was started right there. And I say, you know what? I know this thing watching me. It was the creepiest feeling in the world. And I didn't even know about this stuff yet. And you know what happened? Eventually... I had to get rid of that. I had to destroy it. Um, and someone helped me do it too because I, I, I don't think I was able to do it at the time. You know, still new to faith. And they said, Peter, this thing here in your house, it's really creeping me out. And it, it's like it's following me. So I said, you get the same feeling too? I said, yes, it's following me. It's following me. So, so what happened is, um, um, unbeknownst to me, they went and they tear it up because it's, it's creeping them out. And that was the best thing that ever happened. Hi, Linda, how are you? <laughs> Welcome in, Linda. God bless you. So we see here that in Acts 19 and 90 says, And a number of those who practice magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted the value and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver in Acts 19. Isn't it amazing? 
they found it out to be 50,000 pieces of silver. That means this was a great amount of witchcraft um, paraphernalia, things in your house, things that would displease God. Even some spiritual books, you got to question who the author came from because ah, sometimes ah. they're saying one thing, but it's like you're coming from a wrong source. Amen? So what happened is um, when, they, when the gospel was preached to them, they felt convicted. Amen? And they were able to move those things up. If you have a dream catcher in your house, get rid of those dream catchers because they are very wicked. If you have a Kachani, a Kachani, I think they call it Kachani, Tachini doll, those Indian dolls, get rid of them. They cause more trouble than you can shake a stick at. If you have any Masonic paraphernalia in your house, get rid of them. They cause problems, problems, problems. I was praying, the pastor was praying for a young lady house, and every night she would be seeing, the children would be seeing shadows. They'd be coming from, I mean, every source you could think about, every night. So we prayed, and I was asking God, I said, Lord, you know, we pray for this woman's house, but we can't seem to find what's wrong, what's wrong with the house, that we can't seem to find what, what, what's going on. Um, and so he revealed to me that there is something under the bed. He said, there's, there's a suitcase under the bed, that's the problem. So I asked her, she said, no, there's no suitcase under the bed. There's nothing under the bed. I said, well, um, well, I said, you know, that's what I got from the Holy Spirit. And we're trying to get to the bottom of this. You know, why you can't move along? Why your you, you car keep broken down? You always have problems at work. They, they, they have back pay for you. They won't pay you. They say to fix your car. It's never fixed. Your children hollering every night. And so what happened is, hi, Judge. <clears throat> Nico says, so they said, she said, let me go look. She actually went and looked. She said, yeah, there's a briefcase here. I said, I totally forgot it. But what had happened is the briefcase, um, I felt in my spirit, had blocked her mind off um, that she didn't even remember was there. So when she opened it, she recognized that it was full of occultic um, Masonic symbols and, and um, paraphernalia. So we make her get rid of it. It was actually her husband owned, and they were going through a divorce. They're going through a bit of divorce. Hey, hi, how you doing? Pastor Nico says, what you saying? They're going through a bit of divorce. And she set the stuff off. Do you know, within a couple of days, I think, or a couple of weeks, the stuff was right back under the bed. It was right under the bed. <laughs> it was right under the bed. And it happened again, I think twice. And then finally it stopped. That means that the thing had an assignment and had an agenda. It was there to cause her never to want to move on again in life and to curse her life. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes certain stones. Yes, yes. Yes, Judge, how you doing? <laughs> Judge Franklin Williams is in the house. God bless you, man of God. If you have any occultic posters, get rid of them. If you have any clothing with pagan symbols on them, witchcraft symbols, Power symbols, even these little, what do you call them now? Those little, those little um, thing, um, Pokemons. If you have anything with those, get rid of them now because they're, they're more dangerous than anybody else because they look so, they look so harmless. Hey Amen. They look so harmless and they look so cute that you can't fathom the damage they could do. Amen. And that's what gets us in trouble. Things are cute and harmless and we think that, oh, you're not to that, you know, and you take them into your house and from the time you take them into your house, there's trouble. Amen. So God is getting ready to unlock it's people's destiny. Amen? If you have anything like Lapa Azula, have you guys ever heard of that? Witches and occultists use them because they carry power. They carry extreme power. They use them to open their third eye. Amen? They use them to open their third eye and to acquire power. Lapas Lazuli is a type of rock, a crystalline rock. It's different from the, the see-through crystal, but it's called lapis lazuli. I'm not saying all of them are, but, but it depends on the source where they get them from. It depends on the source where they get them from. The source. Um, because God made all these things, mind you. He made all of them and He made them beautiful, right? But it's just that um, people will take them and they will carry them and have them bless, have them curse or whatever you want to call it. They would have the, put a spell on it um, and they would use it, they would charm it and have it charged. And so when you take it into your house, 
you now become a part of it because like 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 um like uh Minister Valentine said, you open a spiritual uh, as a as a spiritual talisman now, you have a spiritual talisman which opens a vortex. So this can cause a problem, amen. And so um what this lapis lazuli does is it's supposed to ward off evil eyes, reverse spells, and it's supposed to destroy um evil spirits around you. Amen. Um a lot of people talk about the Celestine. It's also um a form of crystal is used to repel negative emotions and negative energy and it heals the room. This is what they use it for. This is what witches um and um, occultists use it for. Then they got something called the tiger eye. The tiger eye. It wards of evil spirits. It wards of evil spirits. It looks like a tiger eye. It literally looks like a tiger eye. It looks like the eye of a tiger. And it also brings financial blessings and increase. Amen. Which pets should you avoid for your children? Pets. <laughs> I think all pets are fine. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dog person, so I, I would go with dog. <laughs> I like dogs. Remember, people have different tastes. Amen. People are now drinking water infused with these crystals. This is supposed to energize the whole body and turn it into like a wand. They're drinking the crystals crushed into, into microscopic particles. That's good for you, Tommy. <laughs> and they're drinking it, and so it turns them into one itself. It turns them into one. It goes into their cells, and so they become a one. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to get psychic abilities. They're trying to get psychic power, um, and they want to know the future. That's why they take these things, you know. The liquid, I'm uh, sorry, the, the, the crystal, it gives you the feeling of being alive, totally alive. It moves and takes away the feeling of being a victim. And it causes you to have inspiration. Amen? And it encourages lucid dreaming. That's why people take the crystal into their house. It causes them to have lucid dreams. It also purifies people's auras. And they say it also causes people to be able to astral project in the night season it also helps reduce your appetite if you're trying to fast or you're trying to lose weight they take the crystal um, and they look at the crystal and they begin to chant things and so the crystal um, operates through vibration but remember now the Lord said all of these things are what an abomination do not learn to do after the nations when you come and possess the land because these nations in Deuteronomy 18 it talks about these things amen because these um, gems and crystals they vibrate at a certain energy frequency and most of them take them in to bring them good luck and they also take them in to bring them into fortunes but also encased in these gems encased in these stones they have demonic entity amen demons Demons, demons. There are some places that you go and you take the rock and you will ask, you could actually die. Many people went to Hawaii, they took the rock from Pele, the volcano, and they said they had nightmares and terrors, and they had to take, they had to take the rock back. Some of them went to um, Blaney in Ireland, the Blaney Mountains, and they, they took the, the, the stones from there, and they, they were terrified. They were terrified because they took these things and they shouldn't have taken them. They had nightmares and they had um, misery accompanying them. They had unfortunate things happen to them because they took these stones and these stones were cursed. People who also take up the Maori mass. Have you guys ever heard of the warriors called the Maori? These were a famous group of warriors. They almost like the Hawaii Hawaii people, like um, like Indonesia type of Indonesia. Um, what do they call those guys from Samoa? Like the Samoans. They like that. But these Maori warriors. They used to use the war. They used to use the war mask. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Carry on. They used to use the war mask as a form of of of, of magical talisman um, to fight off and ward off the enemy. So what they would do is they would infuse their spirit within the mask. So even if even if you uh, even if they died, they could come back at some point through the mask. 
So people would begin to steal the mask from the graves and even broke into uh, various places and take the mask because the mask was supposed to be for the power. But most of them got nightmares and they got they were they were horrified and and a lot of them died because the mask um, would come. Um, the spirit that was within the mask, the demons that was in the mask, would come and haunt them. And even sometimes certain brooches, the Delphi Sapphire, you ever heard of that? The diamond. They said most people who had a diamond, they end up in horrible, horrible situations. Here are some of the feelings that you could have when you have an accursed object in your house. Diane Pelicanos, God bless you. Jacqueline Hall and Giselle Trotman, God bless you. Welcome on, guys. You could have a feeling of vertigo. You could have dizziness. You could have feeling like you're cloudy, you're double-minded. It's like you, your thoughts are cloudy. It's like... You also could find yourself, if you once were into witchcraft or into, um, into uh, the occult, you could find yourself slipping back into it. That's because the, the object is empowering the environment, is empowering the environment. And so it's creating a vortex in your environment and it's charging it with its own vibration. So you are now legally given this thing, territorial rights, to assume um, and take control of of your of your person and your environment amen it causes tremendous nightmares you got lack of spiritual discernment you wouldn't even be able to discern when someone is telling you the truth because the thing would have you dim spiritually amen um you have a lack of you know like almost like you have a lack of um of understanding you won't be able to read the bible uh, <clears throat> you'll try to read the bible and then uh, all of a sudden there's like a blockage you can't seem to understand nothing. You can't seem to to uh, to remember a certain scripture, or you just read this, and then all of a sudden it's like it blank you out. That's because there is a spirit that has been tapped into your mind. Now it's now blocking your mind. Amen. Just like with a gentleman um, who had the who had the um, rings, I asked him. I said, "Why did you do that, man?" I said, why did you do that? You know, you don't have to do that. He said, man, he said, there were so much wicked people where I work. There were so much wicked people where I, where I work. Hi, Rose. Bless you, Rose. He said, I had to protect myself. And, and that's what someone, someone told me to do. And I said, but you made seven trips to Haiti, man. I said, you know, that's a lot of trips to the mountain. He said, yeah, because I had to go and renew it every year. And I had to go and make sure I paid that money. I said, what do you think you paid over, over, over years? He said, boy, so much money. He said, so much money. I said, but you, did you, were you scared when you go in there, man? He said, no, man, I wasn't scared. I wasn't scared, man. I wasn't scared. He said, you know, it worked. It worked for time. I had power. I had tremendous power. I got promotions. I got blessings. I got all kinds of stuff. I was able to, you know, stop them from killing me, you know, and I began to like it. You know, I began to get good at it. And I, um, I look forward to it, you know. I said, wow, wow. That's deep, man, you know, because... I said, but look what it, you know, I didn't say, you know, look what it did to you. I said, but, you know, you know, the enemy turns around and, and you know, blackmails you. Look what, look what, you know, look what's happening now. He said, yeah, I can see them. I can see them. He said, I can see them. <laughs> Nobody else in the family can see them, only him one. He could see them physically, just not, 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 not in shadow form or in vision. He could physically see them coming in the house, coming in the gate, walking around the yard, looking for him, telling him to get him. His eyes are open to that because he was so deep into it. He was deep into it and now they could see him. And he could see them. I mean, literally, literally he said they would be opening this door, opening the gate. Things were moving in the house. Shadows were moving. Um, his wife them were glimpsing shadows, but he could physically see them. Even though his sight was gone. His sight was gone. Now his sight has been restored. It's been restored. Um, not fully, but it's not totally, it's not totally, um, it's not totally restored, but it's getting there. And here, I think, a partial paralysis. He's been healed from that as well. Amen? So, when you decide to do this thing, I want you to count the cost of what your children can go through. The fact that eventually the enemy will turn on you. They will ask for more things and more things. Eventually, they can ask you for one of your children. <coughs> they will start off asking you for small things. They'll say, put this ring on you. Put this shirt on you. Put this on you. Put that on you. They'll give you. They'll give you the things, and you'll see the results. You'll see the benefits. You'll see the power. But eventually, they can say, "Now, if you really want some power, 
I don't need no goat. I don't need no cow. What I need is one of your children. If you really, really want to see this thing work for you, you need to give me one of your children. I need the one you love the best. And this is just the way they operate. And um, I think he, he probably, at that point in time, probably didn't want to do that. You know, and so they decide that, okay, we can punish you, teach you a lesson. And so they decide to take everything from him. And they would torture this man day and night, torture him day and night, torture him day and night. I mean, literally, stuff moving in the house, stuff throwing down, stuff disappearing, and then repairing a couple of days later. It's what they do to make you go insane. They do it to mess with your mind. Amen? And that's why when you take these things in your house, when you take a, a upside down and put a cross in your house, when you take um, cultic jewelry, a cultic earring in your hairs, into your house, or put it on your ears, or you put the unicorn here, or any onk here, what you're doing is you're taking that thing into your spirit, man, and that's going to come back and teach you. Yes, yes, yes. So if you have these things in the house, if you have a leprechaun in your house, I need you to get rid of it. If you have a banshee, a puka, if you have trolls, if you have gargoyles, they're not little cute little toys. Okay, these things are real demonic entities. And they, um, if they get a chance to come to your house, they will afflict your life. Amen? You see them seeing Smurf? Get rid of them Smurfs. Spooky pictures. Any, any picture that looks spooky to you. Or weird. Or it's just like, I can't seem to put my finger on it, but there's something quite, not, not quite right with this, with this picture. I don't know what it is. If you have a statue of Eros, Zeus, Odin, Thor, if you have any one of the titans or demigods, get them out of your house. Any mask, I don't care where it's from, just to be on the safe side. Not all are like that. I'm not saying all like that. But most of them have been blessed in a satanic coven. Man, I don't want you to be in paranoid either, so you can be, you know, just be kind of like living in a shell. That's not the way God wants us to live. But He wants us to be discerning. Amen? And so if you discern something wrong, something off, you know, get rid of it. Um, if you have fairies, fairies are the little two things we talk about. Fairies were wicked little small creatures that caused plenty of trouble and it's a torment people. Elves, also small but very, very powerful wicked creatures. Any dragon statues, any elephant statues, any dolls. Dolls have a very infamous beginning. Dolls were used in satanic rituals to act as an effigy for a person and they would use as a point of contact <clears throat> any beautiful dolls but they have bat wings any beautiful dolls but they have a tail like a tail coming out <laughs> all right those are not those are not tall those are not dolls those are demonic uh, depictions they're showing you if you have any wizard i don't care if it's gandalf i don't care if it's i don't care who it is it's a wizard don't take it in your house any warlock, any ghost, any apparition, any shadow people, any books dealing with that, anything with Kali, Kali, K A L I, Shiva, any one of the demigods, get rid of them, get them out of your place, amen? Get rid of those things out of your place. Anything with Ganesh or, or Hanuman or any one of those monkey gods or anything, any Hindu deity, get them out of your house. They will cause problems. Amen? I was um, ministering to a young lady. And, um, and um, she said, Pete, you know, I, and I need to pray for my shop, you know. I come pray for my shop, you know. I said, okay, sure, no problem. So I went and I prayed for the shop. And, you know, I just turned down, man. And I, you know, I just really go into town. And, and I said, well, why do I feel like I'm hitting up a, 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 you know, like a, like a, I'm hitting up against a wall. Like a brass like a brass ceiling, you know, like I, I, I can't break through. And I said, what, what is it? So I pray and pray and pray, and the Lord said, go look under her counter. See, her intention was to just have me pray for the place and not tell me what it is. Some people will use your anointing to get, to get, you, um, to get themselves out of a situation, but they don't never want to change um, their lifestyle. They just want to get rid of the temporary, to get rid of the pain, get rid of the problem, but they won't continue to live how they live in the event. So... <clears throat> I went right there, I went right under the thing and looked at it there and pulled out the Buddha head. <laughs> she said, how you, how you find that? How you find that? It was a big Buddha head. And I said, well, I said, you know, I, I didn't know where it was. I just was led by the Holy Spirit. 
So she said, uh, she said, uh, um, someone gave me that and they gave me this stuff on feng shui and they gave me this stuff on, on different things and they said, you know, burn these incense and burn this and burn that and it bring blessings to your house and bring blessings to your place and bring blessings to this. So I said, wow. I said, but you know, look what's happening to you now, man. They got you in court. You, you bound right up. Everything's taken from you. You're locked down. You owe several months rent. You want to, you know? I said, that doesn't look like it's, you're being blessed. I said, as a matter of fact, it looks like you're being cursed. I said, and to tell you the truth, this is what um, is bringing the curse. This is causing the problem. And she said, wow, 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 man. And she went back there and it was another seven of those Buddha heads there, hidden strategically two places. Brass Buddha head. And we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And she said, can you come by my house? Uh, can you come by my, my house and pray? So, you know, we went and prayed by the house. And then she had another set of them. This time it was like 20 of them. <laughs> and these ones were almost like solid brass gold type of deal. I mean, they were huge and expensive. And you can see she took great time to acquire them. Yes, it deals with yin and yang. You know, um, darkness and light. Matter and and uh, spirit so um we had we made it do a big 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 thing you know and there's so much that she couldn't burn it there they had to go to the beach and burn it and i think it was it was like i mean a real serious bonfire she burned for days for days for days for days for days that tells you sometimes saints what is keeping us back what is holding us holding us back is the legal ground we are giving the enemy because of object in our house. The object in the house of giving the enemy legal ground to oppress us. Amen? And we don't want to get rid of the legal grounds. We don't want to get rid of the thing. And then we make her got rid of some pictures. These pictures were so seductive. I mean, they immediately when you went in there, you could felt the spirit of lust that was operating. There was a strong spirit of lust that was holding on, amen, to, to people when you get in there. So we had to go in there and cause it, uh, cause it to get rid of them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So what I want to do right now is I want to, I want to do a little prayer. I want to get in a prayer, some prayer, some prayers. Amen? So I want you to cover yourself. Start to cover yourself. Start to cover yourself because we can pray. Roku Rabakila Bracata Tabasudo Boku Roku Rabakila Bracata Bacolo Sulabra Rekila Bracasa Tabacu Rabacala Bacaraba Rabacala Brasil Bracata Tabacu Robocurba Rayla Brasilaba Father, I cover everyone under the sound of my voice watching this program with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cover you with the blood. I cover you with the blood. I cover you with the blood. I cover you with the blood, Betty. Betty Sales, I cover you with the blood in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cover you with the blood, Betty Sales. I cover you with the blood in the name of Jesus Christ. I cover Valentine Johnson, Pastor Valentine Johnson. I cover him with the blood. I cover his work. I cover his ministry. I cover the good work he's doing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God, may you raise up brothers like himself. God, may you give him honor bearers that will honor him. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cover Raquel with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cover Brokel with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I cover you with the blood. I release the blood of Jesus Christ. Even over the service on yesterday. God, I decree, I, I decree and declare that that young lady would maintain her deliverance, Lord. God, she will keep her deliverance, Lord. And all those that got delivered, all those that got set free, will maintain and keep their deliverance, Lord Jesus. God, they won't just come in and, Father God, not maintain it, Lord, and just get healed and then go back to doing what they were doing before. But they would maintain the deliverance. They would maintain their deliverance. And everyone who've gotten breakthroughs, Lord, may they maintain their deliverance and not go back into the same cycle and pattern of failure so the enemy could come in and steal and sift them like weeds. God, even ministers of the gospel, Lord, help us to remain motivated, Lord. God, even, Father God, some of us suffer from burnout and, and for people, God, just pulling on us, Lord, may they learn to appreciate the ministers, Lord, and those that... Father God, labor for them on behalf of them. Those who pray for them, even when they don't know they're praying for them. God, help us to honor ministers, Lord, such as Valentine Johnson, Lord, Father God, and, and those you're raising up, Father God. We ask that, God, you would, Father God, give us, Lord, Father God, ministers 
after your heart, Lord, shepherds, Father God, after your own heart, Lord, Father God, not hirelings, but shepherds, who will, Father God, indeed love the flock, love the flock, Lord, and even if it need be laid on their life for the flock, God, even as you went away, even for the for the for the one, you left the ninety nine and went for the one. That shows, God, how much you love your people. And so now, give us hearts of love for the people, Lord. Even now, Lord Father, God, becoming as whiplash, backlash. God, becoming as counter attack, even from the meeting, God, because there was a great deliverance that took place in the meetings, Lord. Great deliverance, Lord. And now, Father God, God, let the Spirit of the Living God be glorified, Lord. God, we decree and declare in the season, Father God, what God has blessed no man can curse and so right now father god we thank you for the blood of jesus christ god right now we dip everyone watching this program in the blood of jesus christ yes yes i'm not gonna rush this i dip you amanda in the blood of jesus christ i dip you in the blood of jesus christ amanda and i dip you in the blood of jesus christ Ernest, in the name of jesus christ of nazareth I dip you, Giselle, in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I release the blood of Jesus Christ over your life today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Tammy, Tammy, I release the blood of Jesus Christ over you. I call upon the blood of Jesus Christ over you in the name of Jesus Christ. Linda, I cover you with the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover your life. I cover everything you do. I decree and declare in this season that you will possess the, your possessions and that in this season... God will move you forward from the generational curses that the enemy has been using to afflict and cause problems in the season. I decree and declare that you will crush the enemy's head and that you will possess your possessions. Amen. God causes us, Father God, to move further and further into your presence, Lord. Tell me so lost. We don't know where to be going or coming. Hide us from the plans of the adversary, Lord, and from every attack. God of evil, wicked people. Who are angry at the service, who are angry at what Minister Johnson is doing, who are angry with what I'm doing, and every other minister out there who are ministering under the power and the unction of the living God. God, keep us, Lord. Preserve us, Lord. Preserve us, Father, from strange people, from strange women, and from those who would come in and sabotage, Father God, those who come in with all kinds of good talks, but inwardly, inwardly they're wolves, Lord. Help us to have eyes to see, Lord, and to know, Father God, who we're dealing with, Lord. God, give us, Father God, revelation knowledge in, Father God, the power of yourself, Lord, Father God. And Lord, even now, Lord, Father God, let there be love for one another, Lord. You said people will know us by the love we have for one another. God, let there be love today. Love, 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 love today. Love for one another. Love for our brother man. Love for our sisters. God, Father. How could you be in the same church with a person? How could you be in the same church with a person? You will, you will hug them in church, but when you see them outside, you will not even hail them. You don't even come in fellowship with your sister or brother. You will see them in church and will be church brother. But when you're outside, you won't even say, Hello, hi, how you doing? You will talk to them, but in church, love them. That's not right. You hear me? It's wrong. God, may we change that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, you're right, you're right, you're right. Hallelujah, Lord. God, help us, Father God, be, Father God, love us, love us, not only, Father God, of ourselves, but love us of your children, love us of your sheep, God, and, and, and the world will see this, and they'll want what we have, they'll want how what we have, because they'll see the joy, the love we have one for another, and they will desire it and crave it, Lord, they will hunger after it. And God, where we wax cold, where we wax cold, Lord, and we're just serving you, Lord, we're just serving you, Lord, and we're just doing it on a route, and our routine, we ask that you will ignite that fire, ignite that passion, ignite that holiness, ignite that, ignite that, 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 the desire, Lord Father, that we had when we would spend hours with you, Lord, just worshiping you, Lord, just praising you. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter who, and what, and how. As a matter of fact, people, even Christians, other Christians thought we were crazy and they thought we were going overboard, but we didn't care because all that mattered was Jesus. All that mattered was the Holy Ghost. All that mattered was you, Lord. And so, Lord, we ask that you give us back that same touch where we've lost it lord where we've lost it lord father god we we've lost that cry we've lost the, the holiness lord we've, yeah we're doing the things yeah we're saying things yeah we're going through motion yes lord help us to father god come into that uh father god that that level where as father we just know you're with us whether we feel it or not just know it that calls for maturity lord but let us be in love with you all over again spend time with you lord god give us that cry back lord give us that cry back lord father god give us that cry back God, I pray over Brakel. I pray over Rose, God. I cover Rose. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> yes, yes. 
Yes, yes. Rose, every, everyone who's a graphic artist, they, they, they cool you them. It's just sometimes, um, you know, it is sometimes some things, you know, they're, they're definitely from the, from the ram. <laughs> but not all, you know what I mean? That's why I'm saying you need discernment. It shouldn't be spooky spiritually. You know what I mean? I have you living in a box, you know? Very, very weird. So I bless Betty Sales today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I bless Rashelia. I bless Jennifer uh, Thomas Parks. I bless Rose Graveyard. Yes, Jesus. God, I ask that, Father God, in this season, you would give us, God, a desire to serve you, Lord. God, where we could hear you plainly as day, Lord, and we just love upon you. And God, we just would spend time worshiping you, spend time hanging out with you, Lord. And we didn't care what nobody else cared because we were in love with the Father. And everywhere we go, we would just would see the Father, Lord. And God, we ask that you restore back to us the joy of our salvation. Some of you, we lost your joy. Some of you lost your joy. And God said to tell you, he's giving you back your full joy. Some of you are smiling, but there's nothing behind a smile. It's an empty smile. The Lord said to tell you, he's giving you back your full joy. Amen? Some of you are just going through a route, motion. You're, just, you're holding on. You love the Lord, and he knows it too. But you lost your first love along the way. Some of you are even blaming God for certain things because it didn't happen right away. The Lord said he's still with you, and he still will give you what he said he will give you in due time. Amen? And God is just testing you. God is trying you. God is looking at the reins of your heart. And God is wanting you to come up higher. Sometimes it's because we're not high enough. And the Lord is trying to get us to grow. Even as a child, when you were a child and you were a baby, um, your mother would coddle you, your, your father would coddle you, they would hold you. And eventually when you grow to a certain level, you now have to learn how to walk. And you don't want to walk. You want to carry you all the way, but they put you down. And then you have to crawl. <laughs> um, and then you don't like that. And eventually you're going to stand up. And when you stand up, you don't like that either. You cry again. But eventually... You know what? You can start to walk to them because they can tell you come and they can go off a far away. They can go off a little ways and you can, you can holler and scream and you'll be angry and you can throw a tantrum and you throw a fit because you want them to come there and pick you up but they can say come walk to me and you're going to lose your legs and you're going to start to walk and you can take two steps and fall and then you get back up and then you fall again and you get back up. That's how you learn. That's how you learn saints and that's what the Lord is doing. He's, he's as a wise father. He knows just what his child can take. Amen? And the Lord is saying in this season Go and do a house cleaning in your house. Go through your house. Go through your house and begin to look with new eyes. See what is um, there that has been causing the satanic delays, been causing backwardness, been causing problems, been causing uh, a lot of things from coming to pass, been shutting things down for you. It could be simple. It could be some something simple. It could be as simple as a brooch someone gave you. Someone could have given you a a book. And I remember a lady came to our service and it was, she was going through tremendous um, problems in her business and she couldn't seem to get in no way and her, her, her business was unlocked when at one point in time she was doing exceedingly well. And so I began to minister to her and the Lord um, revealed her business and I told her, said, you know, there's something you've been given to you. It's like something has been given to you. She said, no, 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 ain't nothing been given to me. No, 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 no. And then I didn't see it for a couple of days and then she told me, said, yeah, you know, my God, I just remembered that, yeah, there was something given to me and she brought it. And as she brought the gift that was given to her um, in, in two jars, a giant lizard leapt out of the, like, truck come out of the jar. I knock it back in. And we put it in the paper bag. And we held it for a couple of days until the meeting. And then we had the meeting. We cracked the jar open. And the lizard wasn't there anymore. <laughs> and we burned it. And she couldn't move. She fell under the power of God. And she could not get up. She could not get up. She couldn't get away to walk around for a couple for a couple hours, and after that, what happened? She I didn't see her for months. When I saw her again, she said, "Listen, man, God, business is so good, business is so awesome. My marriage has been restored. Um, I'm now done. I'm business all over the place. Things are so good now, and I feel like I'm in my right mind." When you understand depression, you just feel like you in your right mind. It's like something there, but you ain't really there. You know, it's like a dizzy feeling, like you're feeling oozy and you're feeling here, but you're like you're not here. It's like a, it's like a, um, uh, how can I put it? It's like, it's like you transient, like you almost could see yourself from a different place. Amen. That's the spirit that is that is now trying to divide your your psyche. You're trying to divide your mind, trying to trying to split your personality. It's actually trying to possess you, because that's what is after. It's really after possession. Amen. And it wants to do it in stages because it's now establishing something called a beachhead or a stronghold. Amen? So sometimes the stronghold in our life is to get rid of the occultic object. Get rid of the thing that's been possessing um, a, a, a big part of our lives through 
being inside of our private life. Amen? So sometimes you have some errands, you've got to get rid of them. Sometimes you have a chain, you have to get rid of them. Sometimes you have a ring, you have to give back to someone. Sometimes you have to burn that ring and throw it away. Sometimes some clothes that someone gave you that you've got to give it back to them. Amen? There's some clothes, even as this lady was testifying about how um, her friend and her went to a wedding and um, her friend said, oh, that's a nice dress you have once. I really like that. She said, yeah, yeah, you know, thank you, thank you. And she said, yours is nice as well. But <clears throat> a friend was kind of big, so the dress couldn't fit her. So she went home that night and she put a dress up. She put a dress up. And um, she went and she just didn't forget about it. One day she just, for some reason, she just said, let me, let me see what the dress is. Maybe I need to put it in the cleaner or something like that. When she looked again, the dress was gone. <laughs> so she was like, what? You know, nobody break into my house. Um, nobody had no keys to my house. How did my dress go missing? And I live by myself, you know, I live by myself. I know the children, I know chick or child. How does the dress missing? So she went and she spoke with a pastor, you know, and the pastor, you know, said, you know, someone have your dress and it's a friend of yours. But she said, how? How? He says, well, they got it. They just did something and they got, they was able to get your dress. Um, so not long after that, the woman called and said, I have your dress. Say, I want to bring it back to you. <laughs> so she did bring it back to her. She brought it back to her. Um, but she went to pass. The pastor said, don't you touch that. Say, I need you to go burn it right away. And the woman called and said, why are you burning the dress? <laughs> Mind you, she lived, she lived almost um, three, four hours away. She said, why are you burning the dress? She said, I know you're burning it. She was freaked right out because she knew that she was dealing with a very wicked person who was monitoring her life. At the time the woman took the dress, she lost the car, she lost her home, she was living um, from, um, from hand to mouth, and nothing went well in her life. She was literally living on the mercies of people, amen? And the church that she was going to, she was living on the mercies of the church until the Lord revealed to her the cause of her problem. May the Lord reveal to you the cause of your problem. May the Lord reveal to you the cause of your problem. May the Lord reveal to you who is causing your problem. Who gave you a gift that is causing your problem? Who stole a gift from you that's causing your problem? Amen? Which object you took into your, your house yourself that is causing the problem? <laughs> Which object you took into your house that is an accursed object? Amen? Like I say, it could be artwork. It could be, it could be art itself. It could be uh, drawings that someone drew and gave to you. It could be any number of things. That doesn't mean um, because it's like that, there's a problem. It means that if the person did something to it, amen, they might have went and had something done to it. So if you have some gifts from someone and you suspect it to be funny, then you ask the Lord about it. May he give you light and revelation on it, amen? And if it is so, don't be afraid to get rid of it. Sometimes it's an expensive watch, and sometimes they make it very hard for you to get rid of it because they make it super expensive. So if a watch costs them fifteen thousand um, dollars, and they fix that watch for you, you can say, you know what? I don't know if we don't get rid of this watch. You know, maybe we could pray it out. <laughs> maybe we can fast this thing out. No, you've got to destroy that. I know it sounds it sounds rough, but people people are smart, they're cunning. They know what to do to keep you. Amen. And they know, what, they know what to do to have you bound because they know that you won't be able to get rid of it. So Father, right now I release the glory over everyone who's watching. God, may they have uncommon favor, uncommon breakthrough. May the Lord break them through. May the Lord give them the desires of their heart. Even right now as we get ready to pray, Lord, I cover Giselle Trotman. I cover Nicole Rigard. Rigard. And I, call, I, call, I cover Jennifer. Jennifer, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to cover you, Jen. I cover you, Giselle, uh, uh, with the blood of Jesus Christ. I speak peace over you. I speak the joy of the Lord over you. I speak His presence over you. And everyone who's watching, even those that are commenting, I speak the power and presence of God over you. I release the glory over you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree all demonic doorways that have been opened over your life that they are shut. Now, any, any gateway that the enemy had, any vortex, any... Any access that he had to your life is not taken away from him. Any doorways, we thank you, Father, that they're taken away in the matchless and mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I curse failure at the edge of our breakthroughs. I command everything that has been holding us back and stopping us. Even now, we decree, Father God, that your greatness and your power, God, is going to work for us. Father, the seraphims praise you, Lord. God, the seraphims praise you because you are holy. 
and your whole glory fill the earth. May the glory of the Lord fill the whole earth. May the power of God fill the whole earth. May the wisdom of the Lord fill the whole earth and everybody watch this. God, I ask the Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that your power would begin to be seen, God, in your servants, Lord Father God, and that in this, in this day and age, Lord Father God, we will walk in the demonstration of the power of Almighty God. Oh God, we thank you for your power, for it is glorious, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your loving kindness. It is better than life. God, your loving kindness is better than life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we thank you for your mercies is tender towards us, Lord. Your mercies is tender towards us, Lord. Your mercies is tender towards us, Lord. Your mercies is tender towards us. I bless you, Lord, and Ellis Baptiste. I bless you in the name of Jesus, Derek Pitts. I bless you, Rose. I cover you with the blood of Jesus Christ. I release a blessing over you in the mighty name of Jesus. Kathy Jackson, I release a blessing over you, woman of God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, we thank you for your thoughts of us, for they are more than can be numbered. God, your thoughts towards us are more than can be numbered. Lord, and you made us, Lord, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God, you made us with deep love, deep conviction in the name of Jesus Christ. And we are all special. We are all made, Father God, to be special. Anissa, sweetings, I bless you, Anissa. And I speak a double blessing over you. I decree in the season, God, you will complete. You will, you will have the spirit of the fellowship. And you will complete what you started. And the Lord will give you favor, even in that area. I speak it on you, woman of God. Angie, I speak it upon you. I speak financial increase and financial blessings over you. In the matchless name of Jesus, prophet, I speak blessings over you, and I decree you complete your degree. You complete the degree, Linda, uh, Rose, Amanda, Rhonda. I decree tremendous blessings over you. I speak and plead the blood of Jesus Christ over all you uh, you you put your hands to. Let it be successful. Everything you put your hand to, let it be successful. This is your coming out year. This is your year of extraordinary accomplishments. I decree in the name of Jesus. I cover carry on. I decree carry on. You will move fo you move forward by fire. No devil in hell will stop it. I decree you're surrounded by angels of the Lord. I decree it. Jennifer Parks, I speak a blessing over you and command the four the two leaf doors of silence to be opened over you. Rihanna Lockhart, God bless you, Rihanna. Oh my God, it's good to see you, woman of God. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you, Amanda. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rabba kalaba karba, roko shulba kataba, rabba kashaba karaba. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, roko shulba kataba. God, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. God, we bless you. We bless your holy name. You're a mighty man of war, and so God, we bless Derek Pitts right now. God, we bless Derek Pitts. God, we bless Derek Pitts. Yes, 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 yes. We bless Derek Pitts. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we ask that you fight for him. Fight for him, Lord. Fight against those that are fighting against him. War with those that are warring against him. Yes, yes. Very good, Rhonda. Very good. Very good, Angie. Very good, Anissa. Good, good, good. Yes, yes. Rabakala Rakaba. Rabakaba. As you all extend your hands to this, uh, to this device, I ask that the Lord will remove the scales from your eyes. I ask that the Lord will open, there will be open heaven over you. I ask that the Lord will cause his favor to shine upon you. I ask that the Lord will be gracious unto you. And I decree that no weapon forged, imagined, thought about against you will prosper. And every occultic object will be removed out of your house. Every demonic object that they planted in your yard, planted around your area, will be uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. And it will be discovered who did it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let all your frenemies be exposed. Let all your frenemies be exposed in the season. Those that are pretending to be a friend that will be exposed. Father, how great you are beyond our understanding. The number of your years has passed, finding out. In the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, we praise you for you are glorious who lift up our heads. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness and sing praises to the name of the Lord God Most High. Yes, hello Darlene, God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, Prophet Samuel. God bless you. God bless you, Anissa Sweeting. I pray a hedge of protection over you. Thank you. Thank you, woman of God. Priscilla Sanders, God bless you. I cover you with the blood. I cover you with the blood of Anissa. I cover you with the blood, Prophet. 
Prophet, I cover you with the blood in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I speak and release a glorious blessing over you, Prophet Samuel. Even even right now, I ask that your money would be strengthened. Lord, let his money be strengthened, Lord. Let his money be strengthened. God, may his money be strengthened, Lord. Strengthen his money, Lord. Cause his money to buy more than it should buy. God, let one dollar pay for ten dollars worth of stuff. God, stretch his money financially, stretch it spiritually. God, give him, Father God, financial succor. Lord, bless the prophet. God, I cover Darlene. I cover Darlene Ewan with the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover Betty Sale with the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover Anissa, Anissa, Anissa with the blood of Jesus Christ. And I release the glory into your life. I release the glory into your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nadin. Nazel, I bless you with the blessing of the Lord. I release the Father's love upon you. Rose, I bless the Lord for you and release the Father's love upon you. Jennifer, I release the, fa the love of the Father upon you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, yes, carry on. I release the love of the Father upon you. I release the glory of the Lord upon you. There's nothing like the Father's love. He's a good, good Father and He loves you. You are thrown as the Holy One, Father, and the Holy One, you are the praise of Israel in the name of Jesus Christ. You are the praise of Israel. You are the praise of Israel. You are enthroned in your holy place. And God, we come to you with trembling hands and we submit to you and we bow down before you. Enduring strength, I plead the blood of you, enduring strength. God bless you, enduring strength. God bless you, Jennifer Parks, Thomas. Bless you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I bless you, Tommy. I bless you, Betty. I speak a blessing over you guys in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My friends, my partners, I release the glory of God over you. I release strength and might over you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember now, knowledge is key. Knowledge is key. Arm yourself with knowledge. Arm yourself with wisdom. Amen? And one of the wisdom keys is to go through your house right now. Go to your house right now. Anything that you're not sure of, anything that seems strange, get out of it, get rid of it. Kimberly Clark, I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Good job, woman of God. Good job for bringing the lady out there. Sometimes it is just getting them there and orchestrating it. Amen. And that was excellent, uh, Kimberly. Excellent, excellent. God bless you for that. And may the Lord multiply um, His blessings towards you, and may He give you the next of your enemies in the season. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Tarika, God bless you. God bless you, Amanda. God bless you, Lady Ellis. God bless you, Barry Albright. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Susan Arthur, God bless you. Welcome in. I speak a blessing over you and Rhonda Wilson. Yes, yes, yes. Arm yourself with knowledge. Arm yourself with knowledge, and pursue wisdom. This is the chief thing, amen. And discernment. Rabakarabakarab. And right now, I want you to go in your house and discern anything that's not there. If you feel creepy about it, if you feel weird about it, if it's something, even an old souvenir or something that have, you might say it has, what do you call it? What the thing they call? What do you call it? Value? It has some, um, when it's like an old keepsake and you heard it a long time, sometimes those things have more demons attached to it. But anyhow, God bless you, Prophet. God bless you, Derek. In the name of Jesus Christ, I imagine. Lobroko shulabrahi lebrakatata. Roku rabakarabi lebrahi lebrakatata. I pray a covering even as you're sleeping tonight, you will, sweet, you will sleep sweet tonight. Even as you extend your hand to this device and you agree and touch mine as a point of contact, let the peace of God that flows from the throne of heaven flow to your life now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, carry on. We curse failure at the edge of your breakthrough. Yes, yes. You will not fail. You will not fail, but you will prosper. You'll go from glory to glory to glory. That cycle and that season is over, woman of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will go from glory to glory to glory. Linda, we speak a blessing of you, Linda. We speak a blessing of you and we cover you with the blood of Jesus Christ. Enduring strength, we speak a blessing of you and we cover you with the glory of the living God. We cover you with the hands of the Lord. Kathy Jackson, we bless you with the name and the power of Almighty God. In this season, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we decree uncommon favor for you, Kathy. Uncommon favor. Kathy, I'm saying uncommon favor for you. Get ready for the hand of the Lord moving for you in a very unusual way. Get ready for his hand being shown to you in a very unusual way. 
the Lord said in another 30 days, wash his hands, work something out for you that you've been pondering and you've been praying about. The Lord said to tell you, give it to him. Keep it. Don't keep it yourself. Give it to him. Be glad this. Amen? Jane, I pray for you, Jane, and I cover you with the blood, Jane, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jane K. Allen, I cover you uh, with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I think that's how Jean K. Allen, Jane, I don't know. I think that's it. I cover you with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. God, we thank you for covenant, for your covenant with us, Lord. We thank you for your covenant. We thank you for your covenant, Lord, with us. And God, we ask that, Father God, you would cover our cars, cover our houses, cover our papas. Those that have mortgages, Lord, pay off their mortgages, Lord. Those that have mortgages, those that have children in college right now, we ask that you meet their need, Lord, now. God, those that are living from hand to mouth, Lord, those that need, Father God, blessings, Lord, Father God, that Father God, even even coming on this program has been challenging for them because they're Father God making they're making way, Lord. They're coming even now, Lord Father God. Even now, Father God, finding ways to get on this is challenging for them. We ask that you make a way for them, Lord. Even now, Lord Father God, provide for them, Lord. Give them the money they need, the finances, Lord. God, because you said money answered all things, Lord Father God. We thank you right now, Father God. God, provide for them in the season right now, Lord Jesus. Even right now, Father God, I speak a blessing over them. I speak, Father God, a tsunami of wealth over them. God may the wealth find them. God, may the story change. May the story change. May the season change. May you send an angel of finances to locate them even now. Locate them now, Father God. Even those who have loved ones that are incarcerated, loved ones that are in trouble right now, we ask that, Father God, you will work it out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, you will send in, Father God, the needed resources. We are children, Lord, and so we, we say, Abba, Father, uh, all is yours, and so we ask for access to it, Lord. Everything has been held off from us, Lord. Everything has been taken from us. God, we ask that you restore it to us, Lord. God, we ask that you go to the land of the living and the dead and exhume all our hidden virtues and all our blessings, Lord, and cause good things. Lord, I release the honey blessing, the honey blessing. May their life be attractive to honey. God, may their life be attractive to the blessings, Lord. God, the bitterness that was the, their portion, we, might, we wipe that off with the blood of Jesus Christ and we put on the honey blessings. God, they will, they will, they will attract promotions. They will attract breakthroughs. They will attract ministries. They will attract cars. They will attract, Father God, upgrades. Father God, they will attract apartments. They will attract house. They will attract the financial resources they need. Father God, to be, Father God, where they want to be, Lord Father God. They will, Father God, attract healing, Lord Father God, and deliverance, Lord. They will be attracted to these things, Lord, and they will not be repelled. In the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, Father God. They will attract, Father God, spiritual insights, spiritual eyes, spiritual ears. God, they will have resources, money. Wealth and abundance, Lord. God, they'll have prosperity on every level, Lord Father God. They'll attract it, Lord Father. Those that have been in the valley for so long, even Father coming on the program has kind of been difficult for them, Lord. We ask that you sustain them, supply their needs, Lord Father God. Cause your favor to come upon them, Lord. Even now, Lord Father God, remove, Father God, the barriers and the barricade from demonic forces that have been holding them back right now, Father God. And cover them, Lord Father God. When we break the curse, and the Psalms 109, we break that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nadir Rose. La bracasa la bracate de la bracasa la boku rabalaba, raca la bracasa la bracata, rocosu bracata, racasa bacaraba. Every demonic hijacking of your virtues, every demonic monitoring of your blessings, I curse it at the root and command it to die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nadir. I command it to break, I command it to shut up, never to be reassembled again, and I release the glory, the power of God to flow. Even now, I release it, I release it, I release it as we sing, as we sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord a new song and watch what God will do for you. Sing unto the Lord a new song, watch what the Lord will do for you. Sing unto the Lord. May the Lord continue to bless you. Anthony's, good night, woman of God, and, and Antonine. Ennis, Ennis, God bless you, Ennis. God bless you, Ennis. God bless you, Ewing, darling Ewing. God bless you, Giselle Trotman. God bless you, Tammy. Labra Kosulu Brakata, Labra Kasataba, Rabba Kasabara, Rabba Kasil Brakata, Rabba Kalabra Kasataba, Rokosu Tutubo, Rabba Kasataba, Rokula Brakata Taba, Rokosulu Brakata. I release the glory, I release the glory, I release the glory, the glory of God to flow. The event, New Church, I speak and release the glory over you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nadrin. I release the glory over you. Um, Jathan, that's the name. Yes, Lord God, I release the glory over you, Jathan. Jathan, I speak a blessing over you in the name of Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth. I speak it over you. I release it over you. I decree, Father God, that anybody that came against you for harm, 
and for and for malice. We reject it, we rebuke it, we curse it at the root, we serve its assignment, and we command it to fall to the ground, never to rise again. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, yes. Janisha Turner, we bless you, Janisha. I hope I say it properly. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, and I cover you with the blood. Father, we just decree favor, favor. I just feel virtue flowing out of me. I feel the favor of God falling over you. Get ready for some amazing testimonies. Get ready for some amazing testimonies that's coming. Get ready for some amazing testimonies because I feel the miracle working power of God stirring, stirring in this, in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I release the angels. God, it is of God to go forth and bring in, bring in the blessings, bring in, bring in uh, uh, the miracles that you need. I release it now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth over everyone under the sound of my voice who's been watching this. Reverend Swain, I release the angels of God to go forth and bring you blessings. Bring it to you, bring it to you, man of God. Bring it to you, bring it to you, bring it to you, bring it to you. Peace in your house, sweet sleep in your house, amen? Sweet sleep in your house in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Loboku Rabakashil Prakata. Ra Kalawa, sweet sleep for you, enduring strength. Rose, sweet sleep for you. Tammy, sweet sleep for you. Ja K. Allen, I hope I explained it right. Or Jean Allen, I pray that God will bless you. God will keep you. God, uh, favor will rest upon you. I cover you with the blood like never before. I cover your, uh, all, your, all your possessions, everything that concerns you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Rhonda. I bless God for you, Rhonda. I bless God for you, Amanda. Carry on. I decree knowledge is the key. I agree with you. Knowledge is the key. Knowledge is the key. And understanding is even better. <laughs> and wisdom is and should be your kinsman. Amen. Make him your cousin. Make her your, your sister. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes. So your assignment for tonight is to go to your house and move any funny statues. And I'm going to be posting some more stuff. Um, and stuff we took out of people's house, okay? Um, I don't, know, I don't want to overwhelm you guys, but it's a lot more. But I, I got to release it in the stages. So, um, if you guys have any questions, you can inbox me. Let me know, and um, we're gonna have the book ready for you soon. Um, we run a little late, but we still have it anyhow. Second bus book, so uh, we're gonna try to see if we can stay on course with it. Amen. Keep me in prayer concerning those things, as I keep you guys in prayer. Amen. And so now because um, a lot was pulled out of me to the service, I can call it quits. Amen. I got to go recharge. <laughs> Amen. So God bless you. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Um, on Tuesday, God's willing. Uh, may God continue to bless you even as he watches over us. Amen. Glory be to God. Love you guys. Amen. Bless you. <laughs>